Personal submersibles. Sounds kind of like a Beastie Boys song, doesn't it? Oh, personal submersibles. Either way, when it comes to underwater adventure machines, Graham Hawkes is pretty much the man. He's built them for Richard Branson, he's built them for Steve Fawcett, he even built one for James Bond. Even if it was a pretty crap James Bond. Yes, sir. You get your clothes on. More than anything, you get the feeling he builds them for himself. Well, now he's built one for you and me. Oh, personal submersibles. Oh, personal submersibles. Where the party at, oh, y'all? Personal submersibles. Wiki, wiki, what you want? Personal submersibles. The Deep Flight Dragon is the first machine Hawks has built that's designed to be so easy to fly that any Drongo can do it. And yes, as far as he's concerned, you fly these things. Wings, fins, same thing. They are the same thing. The first 50 years of aviation, a lot of the research was done simulated in water. So if you went to the Wright brothers and said, we're gonna fly underwater, they would have gone, well, duh, of course. So. What's the easiest and most stable kind of aircraft to fly? The multi-copter drone. Heaps of people are trying to build a drone big enough to carry people around, kind of like a flying Jetsons mobile. Battery technology just isn't there yet. But what Hawks realised was that the same kind of design had worked perfectly underwater, using far less energy. The Dragon might look like a Formula One car, but it's effectively a giant quadcopter. Well, a floating quadcopter that kind of works in reverse. Because the Dragon's pulling downwards instead of upwards like a normal drone, everything works backwards underwater. That means if you tilt the Dragon forwards, it goes backwards, and if you tilt it backwards, it goes forwards. So you couldn't see anything when you're moving forwards. That's not going to work. So the Dragon's electronically stabilised to stay perfectly level underwater, and it's got an extra two props on the back to move it forwards and backwards and turn it around. The big question is, what's it like to drive? Well, the Deep Flight team have spent the whole morning packing this with super buoyant foam, so hopefully it'll work with my fat butt in it. Wish me luck. Hey, bingo wins, you there. Bingo wins the big chief, over. <laughs> what did you call me? Captain speaking, we are now cruising at one foot below sea level. Well, this is your real captain speaking, we're <laughs> wobbling around, slowly going out of the gas. <laughs> Whoa! So this is the thing that would be really difficult to do on a regular submarine, just going down. On a normal submarine you have to do a whole bunch of stuff involving changing ballasts, letting water in and out, all this sort of stuff. There is no way that an unlicensed driver could do what I'm about to do in this submarine, which is push forward on this lever, and take us under. Full speed downwards, Captain. You're, you're diving. There we go. Okay. You can see our support diver over here. G'day there, Ollie. Okay, you're coming up to 10 feet. Yep. You're passing 10 feet. Can you ease up on that down thrust? As it turns out, I'm just the 11th person ever to drive this prototype. And you remember that stabilisation software that's supposed to keep it flat and level? Yeah, that hasn't actually been built yet. This guy Kip, he's still writing the code for it back on shore. Plus, I'm well over the weight limit this sub was designed to carry, particularly in fresh water. The result? Fully six submarine wheelies whenever we go to full upwards thrust. No, just coming up, don't worry, just let it go. Oh, shoot. That's okay though. <laughs> We're doing a huge submarine wheelie out of the water. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. Keep going, just keep going. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, come off the thrust. And off the throttle, there we go. By the next day of testing, the Deep Flight team had put in some anti-wheelie stabilising software. Soon enough, there's going to be sonar systems to keep you from running into things. 
The Dragon really couldn't be easier or safer to drive. There's a lever on the left to go up and down, and a joystick on the right to drive and manoeuvre. If the power goes off, even when you're down 400 feet, you just float back to the surface. I don't think it's any exaggeration to say this is going to be the most idiot-proof submarine ever built. And it needs to be. Deep Flight wants everyone to get the chance to experience driving one of these things, but they cost about $1.5 million, so only the hoitiest of toities will have the cash to buy one. But if the Dragon ends up being a submersible your grandma can drive with no training, they can sell these gorgeous jiggers out to resorts as rental vehicles. Imagine that, taking one of these out for an afternoon to hover around some shipwreck on the ocean floor. It's a great idea, well executed in a very sexy package, and it's been a heck of an experience driving it. Here's hoping the Deep Flight Dragon is a huge hit. And now, to take us out, here's Gizmag's own Beatsy Boys. Beatsy Boys.